Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to do uh, some continue some of our studies with it slanted a little bit more towards you beginners, okay? And uh, I'm going to take my time, so this will be a longer painting. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to show you some wonderful acrylic techniques uh, that you can use for uh, seascapes, landscapes, and stuff etc. okay? And it's going to be a lot of fun, but we'll go nice and slow, so some of you will be able to paint right along with me. But always remember, I pause really well as, as well, so you can uh, just put me on pause and catch up at any time too, okay? Let's talk about it. So here is a, a 16 by 20. This is a 16 by 20 wood panel. You can use a canvas as well for this because we're going to do more impressionism. So in a canvas and a weave in a canvas, whenever you paint on impressionism, really does enhance it and stuff. But I do like wood panels, and uh, I'm going to be using some techniques, which I'll show you, that we can add the impressionism. Now, I want to do a seascape, and I'm going to use this photo over here as a reference. This was a free photo that uh, I got, and uh, it can, you know, you can uh, use anything, but I'm not going to copy it. There's too many elements in there, and I like to add a little beach. Now, I promised you in the description we're going to do this drawing-in technique. We did it with the mountain and the little house, uh, the little cabin uh, last time, and so I'm going to draw you in, show you how to draw in, and uh, so I want to control it, but to help that drawing in, instead of having a front coastline right here that stops you, I'm going to bring a slight beach into here, so we'll paint a beach, and uh, you'll see how that goes. And if you want to do, if you do want to paint a lot of beaches and stuff, there's another free one. I said it right back there. Ooh, that way. <laughs> okay. There's one right back there. I said it, and that's a free video that's up here on the channel, and you can go find that one too. And I paint the the beach with all kinds of tones. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is tell you about my colors. Here, this is my standard. Uh, the Heritage Multimedia Colors that I use. Uh, this is my uh, standard palette out for YouTube that I use. This is a Hansa Yellow, Yellow, uh, a Dari Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Naphthal Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, the Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet. We're going to do a, a, some Ala Prima today. So this is the Derivan's uh, Open Medium. You know, if you haven't painted with this with acrylics, this is fantastic. I was, uh, I put some of this out here in the filming studio, and then I didn't film for two weeks. I was out doing other things and everything. I came back into the studio, and the medium was still out of my palette wet. Still could have used it perfectly well. Uh, it's an amazing medium, so those of you that, uh, you know, if acrylic painters should try some of that. I also have out some of the uh, very, the thinner, which is our old, our standby, which is the extender medium. This is uh, a great medium. I use it. So I use this in thick areas. I use this in thinner areas. I'm going to start the painting today with this one here, which I have out in a little cap right here. I keep it in a little cap. Okay, and of course my titanium white. This is a larger inch and a half fusion brush. I'm going to take it and I'm going to start my sky. And you can see it just holds a lot. I'm going to start my sky by thinning out some white with the extender medium here. And uh, the tiniest, tiniest bit of blue here. The tiniest bit of blue. You can see Thalo Blue makes your light colors so quickly go dark. So you want to start out light. Now, where do we want to start? This is where we, we are going to look at our painting, look at our sky. Now, my sky up here is a, a little bit more blue-green. This is a little bit more blue-violet. So you know, let's just add a touch. You could use red-violet or quinacridone violet. Let's just add a touch of this violet into here. And Dave, you added a little too much of a touch. <laughs> so it's a tiny bit, guys. It's just the tiniest bit. We want to keep our value up around, say, an 8 or a 9. You can see it's up there real quite high. Now, this chart, everything I do, all these charts, everything that I show you, please read the video description down there, <laughs> okay? Please read the video description. I put all the links to this stuff over there. And if you go over to our jansenartstudio.com, which is our main website, uh, it will ha always have the links there for that, okay? They're, they're always in there, and you click free videos, and then you click the supply page, and you'll have all the charts you can download and stuff that you want, okay? All right, so, I'm going to start with a 9, and that's where I read it right along the horizon line. But I'm going to start this down a little different. So 
I'm going to want to have my plan here is I want to show some beach. I want to show some sky. You shouldn't have a horizon line right in half. You should have it up uh, a little bit, uh, you know, either above or below that. Now, as I put this light on, this is actually the color that's going to go along the horizon line. And I want to put this color on a little thin. So I want to, and I want to add some extender here. And I want to go down, further down into the painting than I think I might want to. This will go down into the mountain areas and stuff like that. Now, when I put on sky, I don't like to do big, long, uh, you know, big, long strokes. And I like to always mix my sky. Boy, there's a little fly in here. Right there. <laughs> it is... Well, I can tell you, he's getting, it's 103 outside today, so it's a good day to stay inside and paint a, uh, paint a landscape. One little fly got in somewhere with the doors. That's my dogs. My labs have figured out how to open the side door here in the studio, so they go out. So they might be out, but uh, out into the yard there. But uh, Anyway, it's a good day to stay inside. But let's make up this lighter color here and keep it. And, and you know, it could be a little different each time. See, it's just a touch different, and I like that. And it will model this up and drop it right down, further down. Because we're going to paint very much Impressionism today. And Impressionism means we're not going to take big, long, wide strokes because that moves your eye too horizontal. So we just want to apply some color. This will stay wet here for quite a while even though it is really hot outside it's it's comfortable in here I think I have it set at 72 it's comfortable but the air is so dry and that's one of the things that really dries your paint out is the dry air if you live out into the desert and stuff where I always tell my students is and you're, fi and you're fighting your paints and stuff drying all the time to dry air. Now, we have very, very low humidity here. It's very dry. We sit at a very high elevation. We're almost a mile high here. Um, but And the air is very dry. But if you're, if you're in that kind of area, you can always put a little kettle on with a little bit of steam. Okay? Or they, you can get a humidifier. Not a dehumidifier, a humidifier, and use that into the room to add moisture into the air. And your acrylics won't dry quite as fast with that so I had some of that now as we go up here as we go up I'm going to want to follow the good what is called atmospherics and the sky will get darker so when you look at the sky here see it's a darker it's right up here around a six or a seven I usually go to about a six depending on how high you know I, I'm going up there so I will come down here and I will start to add a darker a darker light color and I can tell you right now, I am, will probably have to have out more paint. But I'm going to make this darker. And we'll keep it right up about a... Look at that. That's a, a good six, right between a six and a seven. Acrylics dry, one value darker. So we'll keep that in mind. But let's drop some of that up here. Okay. And see how I'm just moving my brush like this. This adds what we call the atmosphere... You know, we've done it. I've done it with you a couple times in some of these landscapes and stuff. The atmosphere. Sometimes I go just up and down like this. I don't go very often like this. That puts too horizontal, too much horizontal movement in there. I want to save that powerful horizontal movement, not for my sky. I want to save it for my horizon. So I don't try. I don't tend to do too much of that. See, now you get some nice. Just some nice movement into the sky there. Could be a little darker. It's going to dry just a touch darker. But on a big painting like this, we could go a little darker. We could make our dark just a, a bit more violet and just kind of work that into the sky here. Just like that, back and forth. And it's going to stay wet here because I added quite a bit of extender. So it'll stay wet for a good hour or so here. Turn a paint. Let's just take a little darker and just work that color up in there. That gives good atmosphere. Work just a bit of it down. See, I like that that movement of the atmosphere here, and a little bit of the violet. Try not to have too many brush mark streaks or so, unless you're going to put cat, uh, clouds in there. Then you can uh, have some of that because the the clouds will help take away from some of that movement. Okay, so there's that's a good. Good, nice movement to that. Let's set that.
bigger brush down for just a second. We'll probably use it. Matter of fact, I'll just drop it in some water there. We'll probably use that again into uh, uh, you know into the ocean and stuff when we go to paint that. There's a lot of things I want to show you today because we're going to do take this nice and slow. I'm going to show you all kinds of fun little things, especially for you beginners and stuff. Okay, so. Here, we're going to go down. I'm right about halfway, but see, I'm going to take my horizon line up. That's one of the things I'm going to, I'm going to do here. So basically, what my plan is, what you're planning is you go down around an 8 or a 9 down here in value, and then you slowly get darker up here. You can change tones to a violet, a blue-violet. Try not to have a solid edge down through here. Try to have it off with all different kinds of colors, and that'll be easier for you to uh, smooth that out, blend that out a little bit later on. Now, let's come in and let's look for where it's one of the first things that I do like to do early on in the painting, put in what we call the strong horizontal. This is the line, and it, it's a horizon line. A lot of people call it a horizon line. You have different lines, like I showed you in different landscapes. You have what is called the skyline, you have what's called the eye line, and you have the horizon line. And what we have in this painting is, of course, we have a skyline, which is this. This is the skyline. This is the horizon line here. Okay, so we're going to put that in. And I might even expand that to where you see the end. I love to do that. Here you don't see the end of the the um, the hills here. And so that, you know, you don't get an end here. And that kind of closes you off. So I might, might stop the hills down in this area and leave a little bit of that horizon line even further out there. And that opens it up. Well, I lived on the ocean for almost 30 years, and I just absolutely love painting it and, and seeing it and stuff. And this little photo with all this mist, of course, where we lived up in California, we got fog. I mean, it always got so hot, we got fog like 265 days of the year. So, yeah, it, I know what the cloudy fog looks like. But let's come in here now, okay, and uh, we're going to put that that horizon line. So this is like I showed you in other things. This is my handy dandy little square here that I use. Got it. Just took out a ruler, a yardstick that you get for a couple bucks at the Home Depot. Whacked off the end, glued it together, then put a little couple screws. And this helps me with, uh, you know, putting on a horizon line. So what I'm going to do is um, basically just take some of my, almost my nines here, and this will be the ocean horizon line. Sometimes I gray this out with a little bit of burnt sienna here. I'm going to add just a bit of a, of the extender here. So it's a little grayer, a little grayer color. And if I say, okay, uh, the horizon line, then we're going to have the mountains up above it. I don't want to have too much sky. The photo has too much sky for me. So I'm going to come right about in here, which is... You know, just not quite a, or, or excuse me, just a little over maybe a third of the way, a little over a third of the way down. And let's just drop in a nice, strong, horizontal line here that will, that should, that should probably work there pretty well. That uh, will basically become, you know, which is our nice, strong, horizontal here. So I just drop it across like that, okay? Now, some people use tape and everything like that to get that absolutely crystal clear. I You can do that, but in this type of painting, I don't do that because it's too precise of a line, okay? Now, there's a lot where we do where we want to have that real crisp exchange of color. That's It's not that that's wrong. Uh, here, when I'm doing what I call casual impressionistic painting, I stay away from some of those. That, you know, that's got a little blurb in it. It's got a little bit of interest in it there, and that's fine. It's a pretty uh, stark line, uh, you know, for an impressionistic painting, but it'll work out pretty much here for us. Now, so I'm carrying some of these colors down here. Now let's let's talk about coming forward as we're going to come forward okay we're going to want to paint the mountains and we're going to want to draw the viewer in to, to that area there okay so that will be basically the area that we really want to put people into okay so drawing in now one of the things we did in the last time when i was showing you about drawing in is that we I took a paper towel and some of our darker values. You analyze your values, the value scale. Value is the measure of light and dark, and that's what this scale is for. Okay. As a matter of fact, the other side of this is blue, so we can look at that even more. 
What I want to do if I want to draw you in is I have to have the darkest colors in the painting wherever I want to draw you in because this is your background. And so that that's called contrast, okay? So we're going to have value contrast, okay? So I'm going to want to express some darker colors all throughout here right into this area and then I'll lighten up again as I come through here okay so it draws so it draws you in and we talked about that in that last landscape that I did with the little mountain and everything I love this painter we just lost him uh, he just died a couple months ago I was a huge fan and follower of his for many years Richard Smith and see this and he was famous for doing this drawing people into his landscapes putting in the darks not into the front like we normally do in a landscape, but putting the darks, you know, in more into the center. And uh, that really, really, that really pulls you in. So you want to plan that. So I'm going to do a little bit of that here, and then I'll come work on some of my backgrounds and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to take my three-quarter inch brush. And I'm going to look at my colors over here. They're toned greens, burnt siennas, some yellows. I might even pop in some open medium here, some burnt siennas. And when I do this technique, like I did onto the mountain here in one of the last lessons I did with you, I, oh, I'm going to add just a bit of extender too. I don't mix it up real well because I want these colors to come off a little different here and there. Okay, so I don't, I just kind of tap it up and down a little bit. Don't mix it up real well. Okay, and so I'm going to come right about up into this area. It's going to give me room to, it's going to come up quite high. And I'm going to just plow this stuff on here. Nice and thick. And what does that do? That immediately <laughs> takes you right to there, right? But see, we want this to emulate some trees and movement and stuff here. And so reload your brush quite a bit here. We'll let it, this is just our first look, okay? It's all gonna change, but, and sometimes it's scary to do this, but we just gotta do it, okay? So we'll get some of this, we'll get some of that movement in there, okay? And I'll, I'll draw some out, and even if I'm gonna draw it out into the water that I will eventually change later on, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it here. Okay, now this one comes across about three quarters of the way, cutting off some of our stuff, and I might do it with this one too. You know, the beautiful thing about this opaque painting technique that I'm going to be doing here with you is that if I change my mind, I just paint it out. So let's come across a little bit more. I love the triangle shape. We talked about that in other videos about, you know, establishing triangles and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and, and triangles are your angles of movement and stuff, and those really work. Now, I'm going to take some of it, some of it, tap it, move it around a bit, and create some more additional interest here with my paper towel. I love to use the paper towel in a lot of impressionistic paintings because it does a lot of work for you pretty quickly. Now, see, it just moves some of those tones around. I'm just moving some tones around, and I'm going to build up on top of that. I've got to let that kind of soften out a little bit here, um, but uh, I'm going to build up on top of that in just a bit. Let's go up just a touch higher here, Dave, and uh, just give me a, a bit more room there to work something in. And so I try not to... Uh, we're going to have some nice planes, and God, there's that little fly. He wants to go to the beach today. Here, we'll get this in, just like that. Now, this is, back here is going to be all the back mountain and stuff, so it'll paint out. Sometimes, you know, if it's, if it's not going to paint out, you'll see me take my finger and blur back like this, and see how it softens that edge? causes a, So that would be considered what we call a receding edge, and any time I leave an edge like this, a harsher edge, that advances. So that area recedes in the painting, and the other part there advances, and, and that's how it works. Okay, so let's take some of this color. And let's take some of our blues and our lights. Let's lighten up. Let's not mix it up too much because we want some of this values to come out here. So don't mix it up too much. Let's add a little open medium here. Okay. Maybe a little bit more on the blue, blue, violet side here. Yeah, that's fine. And let's just start the idea of some of these back mountains back here. Now that's a, not quite, it's close. It's very close to what I want, but I wanted a little bit more blue. 
So I'm going to add just a touch more blue and the violet here. Let's get it just a touch more blue here, right in there. Add that blue and push that in. Let's see what that's going to look like here. We'll push, so I want this to be a receding edge, so I'll push it right into the wet sky there for right now. And I want to get some of that movement, interest movement in there. And um, so we'll keep it kind of soft here. Let's just kind of give ourselves some ideas here about where a hill would be, a mountain and a hill. And this is just your first look. This nothing, uh, you know, everything on here is going to paint out and over and stuff. So this is just your first look at it here. Okay. So we'll put that hill back there. All kinds of ways to you know, approach paintings, do paintings, and I just, I just love them. Now, by adding a bit more dark right there, I brought it a bit forward. That's what we want. Vary it, angle it out, and I'm going to let this, this time, die right down, right about to there. So I'll bring this down a little further here, make this look like the coastline comes in. So the angle is, this is going to be a triangle kind of coming back in this way here. So this will all be mountain and stuff, and we'll put a little beach in there, something like that, okay? Now, as you start to paint this mountain, so we got some movement in there, and you can see, you can see right now when you step back at that camera, and this is what I always tell you, that camera's back about eight feet today, and that's what it'll look like if it's hanging out there in the gallery for, uh, you know, about eight feet away. Brush movement. Boy, don't take any too long a brush move. You can see the little brush movement that I'm using in here, guys. Look at what it adds, and look at what it adds right there to the, uh, to the you know, eight feet, the impressionism at eight feet, okay? Now, really, to get the mountains, like I showed you in, in painting the mountain that we did last time, you know, we're going to take some of this dark, and let's just toss a little burnt sienna into some of that blue here, a little bit more of this blue and, and a good way a good gray I do like to use I told you last time was the thalo blue and a bit of the red if you haven't watched that mountain one landscape one that I did you need to go watch that one and go and look through the color mixes this will be a nice a little bit different color than what's right there a little darker and I can use it when I decide on my light source now my light source this is the late afternoon west coast it's coming in from this way so um I'm going to basically shadow left side here, but I don't want to go harsh. I just want to push it around a bit because that's what's going to give you the, the impression here, the impression of the edges of the hills and the mountains. Now, see, that's a little dark, but I might, I'm now, now I'm going to take it off here because it's I want to push it back a little bit more I don't want to interfere with that so I'll just take a wipe my brush take a little light let's just just wipe our brush and there's enough paint on there I can actually lift it off a bit here but lift it off a little different so you get some of that movement that's on there and uh, you know my mom always told me who was a, a beautiful artist on you know and uh, for many 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 years still is uh we said if you put a color on don't ever just wipe it off use it use that color and help paint it into position and it's very true and uh, let's come up over here let's push up just a bit to give a little bit of a broken line interest i like that on some of that that you see out over there so i'll just give a little broken line interest there let's drop some of that color down like that it gives just the impression of the those hills there See, now we can create that mist a little further out here by just, and mist, really, the, you want it grayer. So I'm going to add some burnt sienna right into my sky and my light here. And we want to push that right into the mountain and right up into the sky here as well. Bringing the mountain and the sky kind of together up here. We'll just kind of model that around up here, and that creates that mist. What a lot of seascape painters do, like and I do it as well, is that we take the beach color towards the end of our painting, and we put that up into the sky here. And you can see, you can see that right up there. See how it creates that 
would call atmospheric perspective. But your job as the artist is to harmonize and bring these areas kind of together. So there's all kinds of rules in landscape painting that we use. And one of them is to use a common color throughout the painting to create this harmony. I don't do that as much as I always watch my values, but that's a rule that I use when I usually get myself into trouble and I want to fix it. So what that means is if I have my beach down here and I carry my beach color a little there, a little bit there, and into my sky, not pure beach, but the color, and let those tones kind of mix up, your eye will travel through and it creates a better harmony. Well, see, by, by taking some of these dirty colors that I've already used, and you can see it there. See how it's dirtier, it's grayer. And I use some of that right into my skyline. I could use that to recede a edge of a mountain, to bring something back here, and just model that up like this into the sky a bit to create that dirty, misty, kind of foggy uh, look. It works really well. Now we can pick out some areas and push it in a little lighter so we get a little light and dark. If I want to draw the viewer back, I'll push a little contrast right over here where I have some of that brushwork there, right in that area. But And I can do that because I'm nowhere near what I see, all that that I see going on in there. So I can take a little bit lighter, maybe up to a 9.5, not quite pure white, and take it back. You can see pure white. It's not there. Okay, a little lighter right back there. Now, acrylics dry darker. So maybe you go just a touch lighter because you know it's going to dry darker. And that gives you a look of maybe some distant clouds back there, a little bit more going on back in through there. That little edge there, that works pretty well. And we could, uh, you know, we could put some, some indications there back up here of a few clouds. Well, this is kind of what I like, kind of like that there but I don't like them streaming that much. Take a little light and just tap it, tap it through. Lift the pressure on your brush. Step back on the handle of your brush because that keeps the tip of the brush softer and just work it through a little bit. Don't make big long strokes, just small movement strokes and you'll get the idea of a little wispy cloud. Let's put a little wispy cloud right up through here. There and Drop that in. That'll work through okay, just like that. Maybe just a little whisper of one right over this direction a bit. Just pick up the idea of that pulling through. Little wispy clouds. Now, so everything I have back there is very cool. I will want to warm some up, so I'm going to want to take some yellow. Let's drop right down here. Let's yellow burnt sienna right down in this area. This will give you a little bit warmer. Value-wise, we are right around an eight or so. There's just a little hint of it right in there that I do kind of like in that little valley. A little hint of that warmer. And see, that'll pick up some of the tones that are there here from this front and carry it to the back. And that's one of the things you always look for. Of course, it's more atmospheric. Atmospheric means it carries more of the blue sky tones, softening it out, okay? So let's pull down. Let's give it a little bit of a slope right here so that tone appears a bit there. See? So that's pretty good. And see, it's, it's all impressionistic. You know, I'm just kind of creating this stuff. Let's drop some right back down in here. Maybe see some on the top. Tap it through there a bit. You'll get the idea of... You know, little edges of trees or, you know, big grassy plains or something like that. So we'll see some of those tones coming back through here. Okay. And that works out pretty good. And we might, I might open this up right to a beach right there too. Because that will draw you in a little bit further. So what's a good beach? I love yellows and the violets together. When, I'm, when I build beach colors. Of course, I always go off the tones that I see, but when I don't have anything, I'll use the yellow and violets, and then over to one side, I'll put the burnt siennas. They're very yellow, peachy kind of colors is what I use. Maybe add a bit of blue here for the atmospheric. So let's try something like this. And value-wise, we're up about an eight or so. Let's 
and we'll take a horizontal stroke this time with this. This is a three quarter inch brush I'm using. That's a little intense, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on here because I am a professional and I can fix it. <laughs> you know, I, do, I don't mind if the colors. And here's the thing, you know, some people, ah, you know, and I shock my students all the time in classes. And I'll put the wrong color on there and then I'll just keep using it. And they just think I lost my head. No, it puts it in there. If I feel I'm, especially when you're working with values and tones that are really close together, stepping out and then painting them back into position can give you more interest. Does that make sense? So if it's a little wrong, if it's in the ballpark and it's a little wrong, I'll continue to use it and then I'll correct it. And then that gives the painting more interest than if I just had one tone correct and put it on. Does that make sense? So I'll get more variation and that's what I look for is that type of variation. So let's correct it. Let's get a little bit more light and a little bit more blue into it. We'll correct that tone and now we'll slide some of that tone in right there to create maybe that little beach right there right like that we'll let it come a little darker there towards the front but that'll create that little beach right there maybe touch more blue touch more light and just tap a bit of it over there just to give that impression of it there okay and just like that and uh, you know is that done oh heck no but uh, that gives a kind of an idea there. Let's take a little burnt sienna, a little green, a little blue. Don't mix it up too much. A little light. And let's just come right across the edge there. That edge. Right in there. Give the impressionism. This is just the impression. This is where I'll use the edge. You could hear the, 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 the ferrule of my brush scratching the surface there. I give the impressionism of, you know, little trees, edges, stuff going on there. And uh, just use a few whispery little strokes there. And that hides the edge of the beach going up into the, into the uh, hills and stuff there. So we'll just push a bit of that in just a touch. Get some other colors. And see, if you keep those, those colors and everything there... Um, those tones and everything rule uh, together but and don't blend them just kind of model them together there like that the viewer will see shapes and that's what Monet said you know don't overpaint this stuff to put this stuff in there As a matter of fact he uses primary and secondary colors right next to each other all the time and the eye through what we call optical blending starts to blend some of those things but you don't need that much here and I'll just push I push to incorporate colors I don't push to blend so what I'm doing is sliding tones across each other and I call it incorporating them but see I'll take a bit of that and maybe just tap an edge of that right up here like that that just gives you a little bit more back there on that back hill just an idea of something, see? We're going to concentrate a lot of the painting up here. And as we get some more of the painting up here done, we may revisit, well, we probably will, revisit what we've done back there and, and, and uh, you know, give it some more interest. Let's go back and work on our horizon line water. And uh, we want to keep it, when you look at the water that's there, it's down about a value five or six or so. So let's start somewhere in there. That's right between a five and a six. And let's just drop that in. Now, I'm going to want to, I'm going to, want to uh, blur that edge back there, but I do like to, and I'll go a little bit straighter there, but not using tape here, okay? Now I'm going to pull some of this just right down and across and model some of this together and the tone is not exactly correct for what I want but it's enough for me to start and I'm gonna work this right down into and work some of these these darker colors and these tones right in there together and stuff there so uh, that'll work but I want to uh, soften and gray out some of that top tone. So I'm going to put that on and then I'm just going to add some burnt sienna and some light. I got to think about my atmospherics. And so that's why I said I put that on. It's not exactly correct. I'm going to restate it again here. Again, let's put in a little edge of the beach there. Just kind of pull that like that and set that in. 
And, you know, I do a lot of pulling across and tapping through just to create movement into water and stuff like that there. Um, but you can see that edge. Now, if I want this to really recede, I, this is what you do. You blur these two edges together. See how that gives you more of a, a depth to the line. If you want to bring the water and that edge out more, then you do more of the what we call the found line like that. And that, that brings it a little bit more. Now, I can also do that with tone. Tone, I can lighten that up more like the sky and drag it right back through there. Now, sometimes when I don't know, I do both until I find the look that I want. And it may be, a, it may be using a couple different techniques here to get the look that I want to the depth of that. So I have a certain amount of clarity to it. I can blur the edge. Certainly it's really blurred there. My blurred edge back here pretty much matches that. That's a little bit harsh. So sometimes I will just wipe my brush like this. I'll go back and put some nice, light, dirty gray, just a little bit, just whisper it in your brush, just a tiny bit, and then just pull down through the line slightly until I start to see right about where I like the edge of that water there, like that. And I might want the edge of that hill just a bit more out here there like that just so you see it a touch more here a bit more going on back there in the in the back here maybe a touch more of the dark that might be too dark so we just add just a bit there just whispers of it there blur it out a bit that's not too bad that's and I can put the lighter line up here for the water up into the front. So what that's going to do, see, I want to keep my waters around my five. When I'm in this area here, around my five and everything, right up here where I want you to draw in, that's where I'm going to put some darker water. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a little bit darker than what I see there because I want to draw you in a little bit more. Let's do that, and then we know how to adjust the ocean from there. Let's take a little thalo. Let's add a little open medium to this too, even a little extender. This is going to keep my paint a little thicker here. Let's just drop in some water here. And um, you're going to see me paint this area right up in here several times. Sometimes I'll use my paper towel. I'll pull these down, blur these across like this, uh, you know, to start to, to blur those shapes and stuff in there. So I get that incorporation of those colors. It's not blending them. See how they're just kind of, it's almost like I always, it's, it's like envisioning marble, marbleizing it, you know. The, the, in marble, it doesn't lose its color. They just kind of incorporate or move around into each other there a bit here. So let's just drop that in. Let's just move some of those tones, pull some of that down, up and down through there. So, because we're going to do a lot of that artistic stuff in there. Okay, but let's get it nice, dark, a little bit of toned color. Let's add a little extender. So a little blue, a little burnt sienna here. Let's get some darks in there. See how that just pulls your eye right in there. So I'm going to do it a little different than the water, than what I'm seeing in the water, because I'm going to adjust and do, to the technique that's going to draw you in. So I'm going to draw my dark colors right in here. I'm going to draw you in right in here into the painting here. So we'll be changing some things around. And once I get these darks in, I can go back and work the lighter colors or add more to the back if I feel I have room. So if you if you want to make the color darker back there, don't do it now until you get dark up here. Does that make sense? This is our center of interest. We want to work this as our center of interest here. Okay, let's uh, lighten this up. Get some pretty colors here, some of our blues, a little bit lighter though. And uh, we'll work some of these tones together. See, don't just do horizontal strokes, incorporate them, work them together, smash them around a bit there, okay? Grab some extender, a little light, work them together here. Work those colors in there. We'll drop the beach up front here as well, but 
Okay, see those darks are so important. Let's get a little bit more of that. A little clearer. See, it's a different dark. It's a more blue here. So I had blue and burnt sienna. This is blue and violet. A little different here. Move some of that around. Get some of that. This will start to give you some ideas or, or, or feeling of wave lines and wave ocean movement and stuff when you let some of that be streaky back there. Like that. See, I'll push that on. Then I'll just kind of blur it out. Blur is not not as much brushwork as blend. Blend? I don't blend things. I, I'll blur it. I like to make tones more than blending colors together. Okay? So that works pretty good. Let's go back up lighter back up here. Softer. A little bit of our greens and stuff in there. Let's pull some of that water forward. Right up here. Right up into the edge of that. Where that hill's going to be there. Okay? So we get the idea of a little beach there. Now, you know, sometimes when I get that a little dark and it's way back there, that's where I'll pull to bring the white of the of the uh, canvas back to uh, get some of that some of that extra movement that I might want there, you know. Or if I want to give the idea of a, a lighter wave line, I'll pull back a couple of bits like that. Removing paint. Remember, we don't always put paint on. We remove paint as well, okay? That's part of a, what it is we do, right? All right. So that came out kind of nice. Let's get some uh, let's get some beach color back down here. I have blue in my thing, so it's going to give it kind of green. So I'll just give a little red there to get rid of it. I don't always clean my brush. I love tones to mix together and stuff. Let's just get a little bit of that. We'll let that blue sit in there for a bit. That's okay. We're a professional. We can correct that. We'll get rid of that. But it's a different tone. And see, I, I used to, when I was a younger artist, many years ago, but I used to always, it used to always just freak me out when I got the wrong color and I put it on there. It's like, ah, I've ruined it. Now it's kind of like, okay, put a little bit of the wrong color on and then adjust it into position because that's more interest. And that's how I paint today. I paint for interest and stuff. So let's got a little bit of green in there. So let's add just a bit of the red. They're complements. If you see a lot of green, add some red, and the red will go. Uh, the green will go away. Let's take some yellow. Let's take some white. Let's just come right back. See now we we can put some of this other tone in there. See and you get some modeling of that tone. It doesn't look so bad. We're gonna put a beach up here. Because it's a beautiful, hot, warm, warm, hot day outside. And we should all be at the beach. Of course, I live in Nebraska now, but so the beach you go to is out at the lake. So, but, uh, and there are some beautiful ones here. And we'll put a little bit of that there. So this is going to come right around. We'll put a couple rocks right here. We'll let this go back to uh, water right back through here. Hopefully that'll drive everything right back up in there. Now, when I'm gonna bring beach and water, this is what I like to do. I'll take almost like a medium tone between the two and drag them together here. Drag and, and don't mix, just model them together like that because this is gonna give you um, feelings of, you know, thin water, you know, uh, water that isn't very deep and water sitting up over the edge of the beach and stuff like that. So don't mix them together too much. Let some of this color sit like this. And you've seen me do this before in the other videos. And so I'll drag some of that together here. And we're going to bring this ocean, this beach in at slight angle here. So we'll just do that. Take, so don't mix it up. Just let the colors come off your brush here. A little different here like that. And let's get it just, I don't want to get it dark. I want to keep it onto the light side, but just a bit, bit darker, a bit more blue. Drag some of this through here. Okay. And so sometimes I'll like take it go like this and then I just lift the pressure of my brush and I drag it like that over the surface. This is what the fusion brush is designed to do. It's a brush that's very reactive to your hand. So it can you can use it to blur areas and stuff together, you know, blur blur some of this together here. 
and sets up everything for your tones and stuff to come in. All right. Now, there's a lot that we want to do and add water and all that kind of stuff. We step back, take a look. That's looking pretty good. But I want to get some more of my core, what I call the core darks of my painting. Let's get some burnt sienna, some green, some red, a little touch of blue. Don't over mix them too much. Let's come right over here into this corner and let's get a nice dark. Let's get a little more green. Now this you can actually in this photo you can see a few buildings and stuff like that. You know, and uh, we could add those impressions in there like we did with the mountains last time if we want to. Or we can keep this more opened up. It's either way here. So I have that, and I'm going to set that down. I'm going to go to a smaller, uh, older, <laughs> very old, you know, older number eight here. And um, let's take some of these colors, model them together here, and just create some ideas of where some trees and movement here. So I'm mo moving the tones around like that, see? So... And it's very important that you don't mix too well these colors so it's different tones come out. And if there a different tone didn't come out, so I'm going to just going to move over to some burnt sienna and force it here. And push and create some of that interest line there. Now that's a... <laughs> that's my left brain. That's a little bit too straight of a line there for that. So let's go up a bit here. And break that just a touch here so it's not quite as straight that's better here and uh, let's get a little more green maybe right back down in here drag some around here push that around we're gonna come real quick to where we have to start developing our rocks and stuff but that gives us a good idea capturing some of that line right there and we want into the painting. Now, I can take some of this, tap it into some of this lighter ocean and stuff like that, and work just a little bit of that back up into my heels back here, thinking small, just to put a touch of those tones back there, see? Um, that is for you to decide, do you want to do that? But I, I do like that kind of stuff as well. Sometimes I'll use it just a, a, a little bit more transparent or wispy or something like that. This is still all really wet back here. Let's just drag a little. Now, see, I know that's a lot, but I'm going to push it and incorporate it and tap it around. But what the, the big thing is, you just start to see some of those tones, see? So, and, and why do artists do that? We do that because if you paint one type of tone, and a tone is, when we say the word, for those of you that are beginners, when we say the word tone, we're talking about a color, its value, its intensity, its temperature, uh, all kind of wrapped up together. And uh, so it's like, what does that color look like, okay? And you have, in tones, you have shadow tones, highlight tones, and then mid-tones. And if you're a follower of Sargent like I am, Sargent always said that the mid-tone is really kind of the tone of the object, or, or, or the color of the object here. So if I'm into my fives down in here, I'm into the mid-tone, and if I want these to be trees, I want to put out some trees right out here, or the ideas of the green for the trees. That's basically what they're saying. And it carries it forward. So, but the tone is... You know, what, what is that color? Some of the descriptive process, uh, properties of that particular color here, see? And that's what, you know, see? Now, different artists will do different things with it, but Sargent always described it that way. I thought that was an excellent descriptive uh, term for it, and I've always used it in all of my classes and stuff. I'm going to put a little bit more of the beach color back out over here. Bring that, break that line just a bit. Drop that back here, just so it's a bit different here, right there like that. And so I start to look at that, and I said, you know, at the very beginning, we're going to come back and revisit this. I'll come back and revisit some of these several times as I work to get the, the look that I want those to have there. That works pretty well there, like that. 
okay? But down right in here. Now, if you're an acrylic artist, sometimes, or, or you know, we, we like to let it, some of this dry up. Sometimes putting tones in here like this and others, it gets really hard unless you let it dry up. Another way to do it is I'll take the edge of my paper towel like this and I'll remove some, I, I see a movement here, you see? You see that movement right there? I'm looking at that monitor there to make sure I'm pointing at the right thing and I'm pointing at it already. But see that movement that's right there? Nice, beautiful kind of a horizontal movement that kind of suggests that. And I'll take my paper towel and I'm just going to lighten up and take some of my color off right into that area and suggest that same type of movement right in there. So when you're painting like this and we add that open medium, it's gonna stay wet for a long time. And so we can go back and do some of these nice removal techniques. Now, those of you that have the fusion brushes into the three quarters and the inch and stuff like that, you also have this little, uh, you know, a lot of people ask, what's that little cut edge? Why do you put the cut edge on there? Well, that's for scraping through watercolors and doing all kinds of stuff. But you can also use this to scratch through and add movements like little trees, all that kind of stuff like that. It makes a great little tool for doing that type of movement. So, and, you know, I'll use the flat of it to push in on some things sometimes to give me a, a little different look than the paper towel, more of a model-y type of look here. Break the edges just a bit like that. And it makes a, a more natural look. There's all different kinds of ways, okay? And beautiful, wonderful techniques. But one of the things we, we tend not to, to think about a lot is taking paint off. If we have a light value background, we can take paint off. Well, I'm gonna move some of the warm beach tone up into there. This is my center of interest that I want to be. So I do want to carry some of that beach tone right up in there as well. So I'm going to push some of that in there, right into that, and let some of that go around there. Okay, and I've, I've captured, and this is what an impressionist does. We capture kind of the interest of that thing. We don't try to capture it perfectly, but we try to capture some of the interest. There's a little more burnt sienna. I like maybe a burnt sienna line right there. I kind of like that. A little more dark, little touches of dark. Your, some of your darkest colors are your, your blue, red, violet, and um, greens here. And uh, just going to add a few of those movements. Maybe a touch more red, violet, and blue. Getting towards those deep purples here. There, let's just model. As you can see, I'm always kind of modeling it a little bit so those colors come off a bit different here. And that's what we want to do in these areas here. We want to get some of those different colors going in there. Okay. And uh, let's touch. Now, um, yes, I might, I might put that secondary rock kind of thing there. I'm not sure yet but I'm gonna move a bit of that tone more with my brush here so the tone is softer. I want your eye right in here. So the tone is softer. Move a bit more of that around there, just like that. Now down in through here is gonna go all the rocks and stuff. So we can use just real lightweight versions of this, not much of the color, but we'll start out with some of this tone here and there's a plane of a nice shadow plane of the rock that's going to be right there. Um, blue, little green, burnt sienna, red violet. Model those. Don't mix them. Just model them together. Let's. And I just look. I glance over and I just try to capture. Okay, I see a little dark. I push a little dark. Uh, you know, into that area. I don't try to capture it exactly because that'll just drive you nuts. You don't need to, because when this is all done, the viewer is not going to see the photo. They're not going to know what you were painting. It's going to look gorgeous to them because, you know, they're seeing it for the very first time. So all you need is light, is light, mid tones, and shadows on your rocks, and you have rocks. You know, so I might put one or two out in here, a little bit different sizes too. And I don't, I'm a little straight right here. That's my habit here. Um, 
I'm a little straight on my line, so I'm going to come down with some rocks right into the water here a bit so I can get rid of that straight line that's right there, okay? And that's kind of nice here. And sometimes now I would jump into a light tone, put that on, and, and it's a little stark and scary for a while. And the Premier Coup, those of you that you watch a lot of my videos here, and I talk about the technique called Premier Coup. Premier Coup is a is a building up of uh, all of frame. It's a direct painting technique, what I'm doing here. And in Premier Coup, you start dark, then half tone up, half tone up, and then light. So what I would do next, I put in some dark, is I would go half tone up. So I would be heading right towards my half tone up. Is So if I'm into my darks, I'm gonna go up, right around into my fours, fives, right in here. And these are kind of grayish yellow. So I'm going to take my blues, burnt siennas, reds, some yellows, kind of model these together here until I'm up around a five here. Matter of fact, let's go flip this back over to our gray scale. So I'm up around a five or so. Remember, it will dry a bit darker. And I'll use that. I'll come through with that, trying to capture some of the mid-tone areas of the rocks here. Not perfectly, just they'll be, you know, just kind of push some of this in. We're not really defining or, or perfecting the rocks right now. We're just kind of, you know, you find kind of their angles. This number eight is perfect for this on this size. Find some of their angles. Don't take out all your shadow. You can take out some of it. Don't take out all, all of it but just give the impression of the shapes. Now here I've got a lot pulling, like a feeling of it pulling down towards that water there, so I'll tap, and here I have the feeling of one kind of coming up like that, so I'll just capture that feeling a bit here. Tap that around a bit, and we'll push some in. Now we might push some water in there as well, this big one I'm going to bring in down isn't necessarily there, but I'm going to put it in there because I want to break that up a bit. And let's just tap that around. It's the light tone we have to be a little bit more cautious with. The mid tone is okay. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm painting rocks like that is we'll take some burnt sienna, some blue, some of our dark colors here and I'm gonna pull a little bit of those tones down into the water a bit. And this is if it, for, you know, well, I teach a lot of painting water, painting rocks, doing stuff, and I always believe that as you carry the, the rock into the water, that helps you with your overall effect. You never know, because, you know, the water, the rock doesn't stop right where the water touches it. It stops way underneath. And this helps you with creating uh, transparency, the illusion of transparency, you know, in your, in your painting if you want to do that. And we like that. So let's just drop some of that down, down like that, those rocks down into the water, okay? And as you can see, my values are really close. I've got some, I've got some uh, good calligraphy there. It needs the light to help you really pull your eye into there. And the light, we, can't, we have to apply by how we see it. Now, so uh, when we're looking at this here, you know, which way, which way is our light source? Light source coming in from the, from the uh, right, okay? Sun's, sun's there, midday there. I might go to a slightly smaller brush. This is also, you know, where you've seen me before, you use my paint scrapers, I use my palette knives, I use all different kinds of things to create textures. Uh, right now, today, this is texturing really nice for me. So with a brush, I'm going to do a little smaller one. This is a, a little number four. I'm going to go white. I want to warm it because it's a sunstruck area. So we're at a little bit of yellow oxide. Don't mix it up too well. Just model that. Lighter, smaller. It's called the law of disproportionate color for those of you studying color theory. As you add a lighter color, the area in which it occupies gets smaller. So you're gonna to touch everything a little smaller. Watch your angles. Mix up your, I mean, model. See, I just tap it on my palette there. Sometimes I'll just tap it into position here onto the rock. Sometimes I'll 
all you know kind of incorporated together with a few extra taps and stuff like that um, and but some most of the time I just kind of let it drag and dribble and roll my brush to get some of the the ideas of highlights there onto those rocks see and let those tones change get some more yellows in there let them change here okay let's just drop some of that in right out over here there okay um, and I can go even lighter yet it all it's all a contrast thing I can go lighter and smaller and all that kind of stuff all that stuff later if I decide to but I'm, I'm keeping most of my light stuff here to the right side so I imagine the rock it's got a light side and it's got a shadow side so keep it mostly now that doesn't mean you can't tap over here to the light side and add a little bit every once in a while okay the big thing here, here is try not to set up a pattern. And I'm horrible at that. I'll, I'm a left brain solid analytical chemist that puts up patterns. And so I have to, I have to really kind of concentrate on it here to break up patterns sometimes for me here. Let's not set up patterns there. Little bits. Now, in doing so, I take out some of my mid-tone, some of my shadow. So I go, I like to drop back to my shadow. Slightly different shadow. Let's put a little more burnt sienna in it this time. And this is what, sometimes if I'm in my center of interest area, I'll support my hand because I want to be a, a little bit more cautious about some of my edges and stuff like that here. And I'll restate some of my rocks there my shadows to me and and this is just me you know because i tend to be softer on my highlights and powerful on my shadows when you your shadows definitely though should be a little bit more should be a little bit more softer but i like to draw with the dark i feel myself that the dark it's easier to paint a rock with dark than it is to paint it with light now some of you will disagree with that and that's okay um you know, but for me, the way in which my hand works through the colors, it's a lot easier to draw through the dark. So I tend to put on too much uh, light, and then I go back like this, and I'm going to come in from the shadow side, way back on your brush handle. Just kind of tap it around here a bit. See, I'm not blending. I'm moving the tone around. Kind of tap it through. Take out some of those... Light, uh, some of those uh, highlights and stuff that I have in there and and redo some of the shadows here tap in some of those darker shadows that you see right in there like that and that sets up some of those rocks there I like that way so you know there's a lot of different ways a lot of different ways and you know those of you that study with me and stuff you see me do it a lot of different ways because I'm a technique teacher you know, I'm not a, I'm not a super creative person. I'm a technique teacher. I, I love techniques. I love formulas. I love chemistry. And so I figure out techniques and stuff like that. And I like to teach them to and show you to them, show them to you, because that's what gives me the ability to paint. I can still paint beautiful things because I use different techniques. And so I study techniques. That's how I do it. Yeah, that's not a bad rock there. It doesn't have a, doesn't have very much mid tone because I accidentally took that out a little too much, but we'll put some back in. Let's take push back in some shadow right there into that one there. This one could have a little more shadow right by the edge of the water there. And that's pretty good. So you see, you start to get those rocks drawn in there. And you can definitely, definitely have more... Um, you know, more light, more shadow in there if you want. I'm going to wipe this brush. I'm going to go right down here towards my beach colors. Pick up some white right with that. And I'm going to redo my, my powerful line right through there. This is really where I want the viewer's eye to come. Right in there. And I'm just going to add some more color, some more lines, some more movement right in there. I like that. Now there's that bit of burnt sienna, kind of burnt sienna yellow slope area right there. Let's just redo some of that. 
See, I like those colors just kind of going together like that. It captures, see, when I'm painting that, it captures some of the feeling there. The rocks aren't quite light enough and stuff. When you step back and look at it, that camera, I'm capturing the feeling of it and I'm getting my nice depth down to there. Just try to capture the feeling. Don't try to copy it. I mean, you'll drive yourself nuts trying to copy it, okay? And that's and it's just no good. It's it's, it's uh, much easier just to try to capture the feeling. Now, I, there's a few lights, little light greens and light yellow greens. We can even hit a bit of our Hansa here. We can add a few of those right back down in here to break up. Don't get rid of all your darks, but... This will help break some of them up just a bit and give you a different feeling there. And if you don't like it, we'll paint it back out. So, but we gotta try. We gotta try some of these different tones, some of these different things. Here, get some of these colors in there. See, it, I feel like there's some yellows, some siennas in there, and I wanna work those in, some burnt siennas and some yellows. Kind of model these up, little blues, just work some of those tones right in here. I think are kind of pretty. There, this helps go right up towards that rocky edge there. So I'm just working the colors in there. See, it's I'm not really painting anything but expressing colors. Now, this is the little roof of a building and stuff there, and you can put that in, and I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I just might uh, push some lighter color right in there you know we did that little building last time if you want to see how to do that but i just might just drop some of that in there and i might which would be kind of nice maybe right in there restate or bring back in my beach that might be a a nice thing to do right in there so the beach comes right back up against the edge of these rocks right there you get a nice strong a horizontal line there against the movement of the ocean and the verticals of the rocks and that's just a nice interest area so we'll let the wall, the beach kind of disappear and come back again right back up over there that might be kind of nice let's put a little line of movement of light right through there slightly lighter and see it's just little bits a little texture a little line that helps draw the viewer right over there drawing the viewer in right in there that's not too bad here okay let's uh take some of these warm lights into some of these grays we'll model all this together some of these colors sometimes i just uh take like my palette knife and stuff like that and i love to do this you know if i'm palette knife painting which you see me in some of the others palette knife paint just kind of model them onto the knife and then I'll come in and I'll just touch them into some of these areas here like that with some of that light to set some of that nice light rock in there. And then I'll use my brush to, uh, so I'll set that, I'll use my brush to come in and manipulate that color in that area a bit more. You know, I'll, I'll tap it around to break up one big rock into some smaller rocks and stuff like that. So you can use your knife as well. You'll see that. And you'll see me in other videos do that. And I'll pull down like that to give that nice slope of that rock right there. Okay. Let's, uh, so you just tap it and don't mix it up too much. Tap it. Now hold your knife. And instead of going real super flat, hold it so that the edge just touches it. Then rotate it down just a little bit. And you'll get different widths of line for your rocks here and uh, it'll just you know build those up a bit more there that works out okay I like that light let's put that line of rock right there of light drag some of that down just a bit so it's like the edge of those rocks there I like that and uh, let's take that clean yellow and white here and using that knife and just add some of that. And see how much more powerful it is sometimes with the knife because if the knife doesn't dig out as much color and it puts it on, you know, thicker paint, textures, thicker paints. So that's pulling us in pretty well into there. 
Let's pull a little bit into here. Just a bit. See, I like that. Now see, I can soften that with a knife, so I got a nice little stroke of texture paint there. Or I'll just wipe my brush, maybe even tap it into some of these different colors here to dirty it up and just break the edge of it a bit. I want to leave some of that line of movement. Just break the edge just a bit and it gives you a different look there. That's good. All right. Now, so I got that set up. I want to get some nice, see there's kelp beds right along in through here and I don't think I'm going to add that but I do like the water right into there. So let's do the water, okay? And how are we going to do the water? Well, I do like this. This is the Liquitex number no. five knife, angled knife. Now you see me many times use the Warner paint scraper. I love that for water as well. Um, but I'm going to try to use this one today, and I might need a bit more white out here as I'm painting. So I'm going to give myself an extra little dose of it. And these are other things that I meant to show you here too. These are some of my favorite landscape brushes. And what I did was I just took one of our big bristle rounds that we have and I took it out and put a hammer to it, hammered it down flat and then let some paint dry up into it a little bit. This makes wonderful grasses. It does make excellent edges of rocks and stuff like that when I get to bigger landscapes. There's just a lot of real fun stuff. But let's just take some of this white. Let's drop it right into here. Let's add some open medium to this and mix, and not mix, but model. See how now you can see the modeling of it. You don't want to mix it. You want to model it just like that. There's a nice little run of light right there that I like. And so let's just run that. Lift up the pressure a bit and run it again. Just like that. See, let that run out there like that. And you get that beautiful look to it like you know what you're doing there. And the thing is, it's just like how much you're going to leave that. Now, I'll soften some of that look by coming with a medium value, a little bit lighter value right up next to that. So remember, this is real dark area right in here. So let's just push in a little medium value there. Just slide it right along, just like that. And so I, I'm really... When I'm doing this, what I'm doing is pushing a lot of pressure down here on the heel of the knife. And the blade stays just running the top and doing that little smeary look right there like that, okay? So, and you can see that here. So, this is the smeary part of it, but I'm putting a lot of pressure down on the heel of the blade as I'm pushing it down like that. So that it is, and that, that what that does is it springs up the tip of the knife here and that deposits the paint where I want it to go. Let's pick up a bit of medium onto our knife. Okay, then we'll just pick up, just like that, a little bit of this light, just a bit of it here, like this. We do some small areas. Let's come right up along the edge of this rock here. Push down, rotate the knife a little bit, push down on the heel, and smear it out. And the medium blue takes over, and you get a little light wave right there. Okay, let's just tap a bit of light. I will generally just kind of tap and run the light right along the edges there many times like that. It's a quick little way. And when I do that, sometimes I do it right on the, like you're almost cutting the board and then rotate down and then back up to where you're cutting it and rotate down a bit so you get wide ones and narrow ones here like that so you can get some different looks there. Okay, and you can create splashes up by touching and pushing up slightly just a bit and then just create a splash onto the wave there or right onto the rock, okay, a few splashes there like that, okay. We can uh, go right down, right up towards our beach here, too, with a wave line, right like that. You can push in, leave some of those darks in there. You know, it doesn't uh, take very much. Now, you know, you can create big rollers, and I do that in other videos with you. I'm not going to put big rollers here because those will be take away from where I want to draw you into the painting. But I will kind of take some medium value here and just kind of slide this through here 
to create a little bit of side to side movement. Now, I will do that and then sometimes I'll take a, like this is a good number eight here, and just kind of pull through once or twice to set some movement here to this. I don't want to get rid of all that dark. That's one of the things that's pulling the viewer's eye right in there like that. But in that area there, I might set up another little light wave. Just pull a bit of that right on the edge like that of your knife. Rotate that. Start out where you almost like cutting it and then rotate it down just a bit to, to put on the wave there like that. So you get an idea of a little wave. Here, let's put a little more light right out here on this one. Like it's just hitting that right there like that. Just gentle, gentle little waves here. Let's come forward here. We'll take, let's grab some more of this. If it starts to, to get a little thick in paint, I'm going to thin it out here with the open medium, not the extender, the open medium, because the open medium is thicker and it'll cause it to slide. Let's just slide right along and push the knife very flat. I'm, my pressure's down on the heel of the knife here again. Push that in there and create some of that movement right in there. More open medium. Keeps it very translucent. There's another medium we have, and you'll I have some videos on there called Faux Medium. And faux medium does this beautiful as well. It's a medium designed to add the transparent and translucency to the paint. And so you just run your knife around and it looks like you know what you're doing. Okay? That's what you do. You just run your knife around. And it'll look like the, the waves and stuff that you're, that you're putting in there. But you can see mine has a little more light dark contrast than the photo does there. And that's what I want. But right now I'm adding basically the body of the, the, the ocean here, the water, right in there. Some lights and darks pushing that, just pushing those together there. Here like that, to add that, that movement, that wave movement there. Okay. And uh, so, and if you need to constantly remix, uh, rebuild up an area of blues, you know, maybe get a little bit of the darker blue in there. It's a bit tone. Add some violets. Keep that that medium in there, like that. And let's just now back here. We want to keep it a little softer. So I don't want to go pure white back here. I'm going to keep them softer. Back off through here. And just do some softening. So I want your eye to come into that dark. So I'm going to let basically my ocean disappear back up over here. I'll push a little bit right up through here. Just like that. And leave that. And uh, maybe one or two little pushes right out here. But no big waves. No big waves. We'll do those in other videos. Just push and slide like this. You know, you've got to stop sometimes. You don't want to create a tremendous amount of, of waves. Now, once you create that, you can pick out a line. Hold it very thin because you don't want big high waves. Hold it very at the edge and create a bit of your rolling kind of waves there. Now, if you, if you want to make it look like the wave... And I'll just show you this too. If you want to make it look like this is a real wave coming in, we take the shadow for what we call the trough of the wave and you pull back this way like that. And that creates the trough of the wave here like that. So if you want to make that like a wave, and I don't want to do that much here because I want to keep it soft, but we can pull, even pull up into that and pull down slightly into to create the trough of the wave here. Lift up into it as well. Create the trough of the wave. That's a bit powerful right there. I want to take it off just a touch. That's not too bad. Let's give it just a touch of a line because we're going to put that rock right in there as well. So, yeah. So, but back in here, I want to keep everything really soft. So I want to go a little lighter. And I just, right along the edge here, just want to run some of this light, just like this, just right along the edge. And this is the Impressionism. We're not going to go in there with wave shadows or any of that other kinds of stuff. 
we're just going to be doing the light impressionism of it, okay? Let's just take this, thin it out with some more open medium and just run a little bit of that back and forth through here. Maybe right through here again one more time. Just breaks up some of the darks with a little bit of movement there, like that, okay? We could give a line of movement right in here, real soft. I want to keep everything really soft because this is away from our center of interest. So maybe just an idea there, okay? And um, yeah, now let's, uh, we want to put in some rocks right in there. So let's get this lighter gray. It started to dry up on me, so we just kind of mix it again. Lighter gray, little yellow, little burnt sienna, blues here. Little yellow. Okay, let's um, come right in here and maybe add the light spot of the rock right there. There's a light position of a rock. You know, the question is, do you want to put another one out there? Do you want to dribble some of this light right out here? Like those are little rocks out there that's kind of pointed out there. Um, what I mean is it's kind of too much of a point of a triangle. So I might take some of that out in just a minute. I'm going to put a little shadow. Handy dandy little rock there. Put a shadow in that. So we might leave that one right there and just take some of our blue on our brush and take out some of the rocks that I put in right there with some ocean line there like that. Yeah, so you can, uh, you know, dictate other rocks and stuff coming out. Now, you know, in the photo, there's that one that's right back there, but I put it in that beach and I kind of like the idea, I kind of like the look of the beach. That's better with that right there, like that. We might take a bit of the blue, just push through that. And a nice blurry kind of, I don't know what that is, area out there is not bad also. The viewer will see what it is they want to see. Put in just a bit of that. That stuff there. See, that could be an edge of a little, you know, beach starting to come back there again or not. We don't really know. We don't need to know. Let's just put a touch of some light. Just a touch. It helps draw in. Just so we don't really want to do any down through here because I don't want you to go down there. Okay, now, but what we can do is... Let's go back up to a larger, like our half inch here. Get back to some of our beach colors. Let's get some of our yellows, maybe a touch of reds. And the beach I really like has violet and yellow. Let's get it a little lighter. Let's come right in here. That could go a little lighter yet. Push in a bit of that, more of that light here up into the front but we want to just kind of push it around you know when uh, on other paintings I'll go in and make the the look of the wet sand um, well like I did in that one back there the wet sand and stuff back there with the purples and the violets and everything and you can have a little bit of that but we can't have too much because we don't have a lot of those colors here in this painting unless we add them but you can add that to some of your sand color Take a little bit of violet and blue and that and add that right along the edge of your water line. That's what helps you really get the nice look of wet sand. Because that's what the sand color is. I used to walk along the beach every morning with my dogs and uh, get some of those colors in there. I'm not going to get too carried away with it though. because. It's mostly about that impressionistic edge there. But it's it's all impressionism, or what I like to paint is the impressionism of it. And see how that just kind of draws you right into that. And you do that through lights and darks, okay? And then we'll soften some of our look here as we come out here with some of our light here. 
very a lot of brush calligraphy you could use your palette knife down in through here but you you don't want to put any darks you know use some use some verticals here to kind of you know add some more modeling interest there that's a little too precise there so we'll take some of that out there like that that's nice like those colors you know that area there the impressionism wise kind of captured that area you know a lot closer than I was really counting on but we'll pull some light down through here maybe on the edge like that's the beach touch of those violets just a touch of that color there and uh, that little wave there isn't looking too whippy so not looking too great so let's just kind of take it out push some blue right along the edge there the middle middle color and remember what I said there is you know it's like sergeant and them said is you go to the middle tone of the object's color and you know water is clear but it's the sky so you're going to the middle tone of a blue to really kind of set that in and that's all I'm doing here the middle tone of a blue here to kind of set that in and that color and movement there and I can take some of this nice a beautiful dark dark violet let's let a little violet into it let's just re, re shape some of this just a bit take out just a bit of that that light and pull it at those angles here and uh you know, you, you you do what I call splash the paint around a little bit and it makes the water look like it's splashing around a little bit here. So you just kind of, but kind of follow, you know, you have a wave line and they do kind of follow each other. Tap that just a bit. So if you want to break up, like if you think that line right there is a little too much, it's not really too bad, you just tap it and uh, break it up a bit. Add the, the foaminess to it here. Just tap it, break it, and uh, you get a little bit more. But I'm going to keep that softer there. In other paintings, I would bring it back up a bit more. There, I'm going to keep it a little softer. Just gentle little hits of it, ideas of it there. And I think that'll work, you know, better for what I want to do here with this uh, this particular painting. Maybe just a touch more light here, right in there. And again, I'm pushing it right in here. I'm watching, you know, the pulling power of my scene right up in through there. And that's what I want to do. Uh, you know, watch that scene, that pulling power. Splash a little water around here, here, around that rock just a bit. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Uh, then you go back, revisit anything. I mean, my my clouds and stuff dry down kind of where I really like them. Um, I kind of cut my mountains here just a touch. So a bit of the blue, I think, over here to the shadow side of that one again. Right in there. Get that light shadow going there. Cooler shadow. And you look up uh, through there. Um, through your painting, you know, if your beach looks pretty much all the same there, then you can take, and a little, it doesn't take very much, you can take a little bit of your, some of your beach colors here, like these, right through here, and just draw one or two little lines down through there, you know, to break up and add a bit more interest to those particular tones. Now, you can also do, you know, something that I do, and you have to be real careful with this, you know, is drag a, a bit of a light along the edge there to make it look like a wave line there on your ocean back there. Now, again, like I, I always say, I do too much and I take it out. Now I'm going to take it out. I'm going to clean that light color out of my brush. Go to the main color of the water. Put that in your brush. Wipe it so you don't have very much. And paint through it. 
take taking some of that back out, taking some of the the movement, the lines of that back out, and that'll put its depth back in there. See, maybe a bit of that leaving it right up here in the front. And that takes that, and you can just tap ever so little back there to help that you know that that shoreline back there and I think that's probably enough for this particular look on this but what I want to do with this particular painting you could do more I mean you could bring in more there is a, a real strong powerful dark right there that I just might want to put in so I'll just model up some of my darks here and uh, just come right back and set that in a little bit more. Yeah, that's it's right down here too. Nice deep dark right up against the beach there. And impressionist painters are going, yeah, now you're getting brave. There we go. Get that in there. And uh few little taps break that up a bit here and then there like that not too bad not too bad it gets a it's a little bit different you know a little a, a nice kind of look to it now you know do you want to keep that I'm looking at this going, that's kind of a straight line right through there, you know, and, um, you know, that's that's kind of like your call. Do you want to do something about that? I might, and I'll show you. See, this is kind of stuff, you know, usually what I'll do is I'll put the painting away for an hour or so and look at it and come back and look at it. Go get a something to drink and come back and look at it and see if there's something that I might want to change on it, you know, and... and uh, which I usually do just a bit, and uh, but that that line I, I kind of like that, but that line's a that line is uh, not fitting that because I'm not following that shoreline, but it's not fitting that quite well. So I'm going to show you. I'm just going to add, and this is the fun thing about art: you should try it, and if you don't like it, you take it out and try something else. You know. So I'm going to redo this just a bit here and push that beach a little further away from what's going on right here. And I'll show you here in just a second. We'll take that. We'll take some of our atmospheric color here to soften that just a bit in my brush. So I'll soften that back. Take those lines away just a bit here. And it's all in, it's all in painting depth and stuff to something. It's all basically crossing planes and so I have to create two crossing planes here one that's going to be color wise we'll create another crossing plane right here that's going to be color wise right between this one and this one so we'll create another plane basically okay and so color wise everything that I do I'm going to be watching for a tone right between these two right here as I start to work this right between those two so there like that so see as I'm adding the color in here a little more burnt sienna a little blue a little violet here put that on the brush just lightly lightly start working little touches of that because it's darkening it, see? And as it's darkening it, it's bringing it forward and it's bringing it in front of this other little hill here, which is what I want to do here, bringing that up. And you can, you know, if you like the other beach, leave the beach. I like to uh, leave a little more undulation into the shoreline here and just a touch darker. Here, little ideas, you know, what are these little trees, little edges, you know, stuff going on. It's like another little point, another little peninsula there, you know. Let's take a soft little beach color right here and just 
lightly add some of that right in there but still leave a bit of an edge there like that's just another little point right there see yeah and you know I kind of like this almost misty look right there coming into it and so I might just leave that you can bring it out a little bit more but I do like that little misty look there and you might want to take some of this tone ever so light so some more sky into it and just drag that along just a touch right out there just kind of blur it out a bit so you get that tone down a little bit further so now you got kind of like a little misty thing here and an extra little thing so if you want this you know to to really go back then you make it you know that's quite a jump there's quite a distance though between those two here and so as you bring the tones closer together they come closer to physically come closer together I can make that a little bit more misty or push this one back just a bit more by taking a bit of that sky color into that just a touch here and as you can see it starts to push that hill back see and uh, that's all the art that's all you know how far do you want it to go that's all up to you that's your 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 choice it's your painting you I know mean, our job is to show you some of these awesome techniques visual techniques that allow you to do this stuff here I like that little misty there just like that that's pretty good let's put a shadow angle here so we get a light and shadow side to those hills there yeah I kind of like that that's a, a little bit better for me it pushes pushes back a little bit more distance into that and uh yeah, see, you could even, you can even take, if you, you know, depending on how much time you want to take, you could even push this one back out a bit more. Push that, you know, right back to a little edge, right out into the water there. It doesn't take that much. Push that right back out there into the water, like that, kind of blur that out a bit. And you get the idea of another little hill kind of thing there. But all kinds of stuff. But that gives you an idea. Drawing in. Drawing in through value. Working something like that. They're really kind of fun. Um, you know. And it's kind of fun to do bigger, longer ones. You know, slightly narrow and bigger, longer ones. But that open medium. Working that open medium and sliding that knife along. It's a great way to do some smaller waves or add interest. You can do clouds with them. There's some other videos that I show you on this channel. It's working with the faux medium. And the faux medium is a great medium for doing that too. If you don't have the open medium, the faux medium that we have is a great medium for doing that. And I show an entire seascape and stuff, painting clouds and uh, painting the waterline and everything like that with uh, the open medium. Um, anyway, it's a lot of fun. We'll do in more seascapes, we'll do some big rolling waves for you and paint the troughs and all that kind of stuff because I have some big, big ones back there. And uh, that I've done over the years and stuff. So they're, they're really a lot of fun. Okay. Alrighty. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll do some more lessons. More coming up. There's, there's another one being posted in two days. And we have the roses and all kinds of other stuff that uh, are still coming. And the portrait. Portrait's coming this week as well. Okay. Alright. I'll see you guys later.